kidogo wanafunzi wote tafadhali wanafunzi wote mahala popote mpo wanafunzi wote mahala popote mpo tafadhali mnajuzi ya kwamba muweze kuingia katika uh, makao haya ambayo kuna hafla hii yetu ya siku ya leo ya upokezanaji wa mamlaka wa chancellor chancellor wetu wa pili wa chuo hiki all members of staff you should now be seated at the pavilion at the pavilion all members of staff all members of staff kindly move out of the offices and get seated students who are running around be seated at the graduation gardens your seats are there your seats are there and you should be seated as a part of your schools tumbuizo kutoka kwa wanadada kutoka chuo kutoka shule hii ya kaga kaga guys the floor is yours mazuri kwa hawa na dada na kumbukeni ya kwamba wale ambao wajui walio na kijani rangi ya kijani those are from blue correct the ones in blue are from one na huyo mmoja alie na jeku that's a from three so from one and from two that's a girl
We are encouraging all students of Mary University of Science and Technology, wherever you are, kindly assemble here. The function is almost starting. Members of staff. Members of staff, except a few who are in essential services, you are required to be seated at the graduation garden. Tungetaka kusikia muziki kwa mbali kutoka kwa police band. Mukiwa huko kama yawezekana tu muguza guza viongo vya.
research, in training, community development, etc. We have had PVCs since inception. The first VC, Professor Jafet Magambo. The current VC, Professor Romanas Opiambo. Administration, Finance and Planning, Professor, Ch uh, Professor Charity Gichoki, PhD Veterinary Sciences, Deputy Vice Chancellor, Academic and Student Affairs, Professor Simon Dranera, PhD in Matters Education.
as a professional title that tells you something. We should be upstanding. We should be upstanding. We should be upstanding. And from there, I hand over this the mic to our registrar, AMP, Dr. Waluboka. Take over. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you very much, Ramara. Let's remain standing as the profession comes in. In the procession, we have uh, our student leaders taking the lead. We have the alumni representatives. We have chairman of departments. We have um, our next bearer. Uh, we have the deans and directors. We have the university librarian. We have the university registrars, principals and registrars of other universities. We have the deputy vice chancellors of other universities. We have the council members of other universities. We have the university management board, the deputy vice chancellors at Mary University, vice chancellors from other universities. We have our wonderful council members, our vice chancellor, the chairperson of council. We have our principal. Secretary of State Department for University Education and Research, the Cabinet Secretary Ministry of Education, the former Chancellor, Dr. James Mwangi, and our new Chancellor, Mr. Peter Ndegwa, in that order. We will remain standing as they come in. Thank you.
by the Kenya Police Family. And we begin by looking at the mistakes we have done to ask God to forgive. I respect life and the dignity of every past human person. Especially the vulnerable. 
option for the poor and the vulnerable. Do I give special attention to the needs of the poor and the vulnerable in my community? And I, do I disproportionately proportionately concerned for my own good at the expense of others? Do I engage in the service and advocacy work that protects the dignity of the poor and the vulnerable persons? <coughs> the dignity of work and the rights of workers. As I work, and do I give my employer a fair and day's work for my wages? Or do I just ask for more and give very little? As an owner, do I treat workers fairly? Do I treat all workers with whom I interact with respect, no matter their position or class? Do I support the rights of all workers to adequate wages, health insurance, vacation, and sick leave? Do I affirm their rights to form or join unions or work associations? Do my purchasing choices make it, take into account the hands involved in the transaction of what I buy? When possible, do I buy products produced by workers whose rights and dignity are respected? And finally, solidarity. Does the way I spend my time reflect on genuine concern for others? Am I attentive only to my local neighbors or those across the globe? Am I a local actor? Care for God's creation. Do I live out my responsibility to care for God's creation? Do I see my care for creation as connected to my concern for the poor person? Friends, with these uh, questions, let us ask for forgiveness of our sins for the times we have failed in those fields, so that we can be ready to offer this ceremony to the Lord. And we ask the Lord to forgive us and say, Lord, have mercy together. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy. Let us now offer this ceremony to our Lord by reading from Isaiah 11. So Moses went out and told the people what the Lord had said. He brought together 70 of their elders and had them stand around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke with him. And they took some of the power of the Spirit that was on him and put it on the 70 elders. When the Spirit rested on them, they prophesied. Shared leadership. We pray from the Lord. So, do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. This is to all of us, and especially to our new leadership. For the Spirit of God gave us, does, gave, for the Spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. And in the exercise of our authority, Luke 22, they began to question among themselves, which of them it was who would be, who would do this? There arose also a contention among them, which of them was considered to be greatest. He said to them, the kings of the nations lord it over them, and those who have authority over them are called by the factors. But not so with you. But one who is the greater among you, let him become as the younger and one who is servant, as one who serves. For who is greater, the one who sits at the table or the one who serves? Is it you who sits at the table? But I am among you as one who serves. He said, the greatest among you should be the last, and the one who rules like the one who serves. Let us pray, friends. Almighty and eternal God, you have revealed your glory to all nations. God of power and might, wisdom and justice. Through you, our authority is right, rightly administered, laws are enacted, and judgment is decreed. Assist with your spirit of counsel and fortitude. This, our nation, our president, is deputy, and especially as we pray, our Chancellor, the new, as well as the young priest, so that with your wisdom 
may all the many serve us in righteousness and be eminently useful to your people over whom they presides. May he encourage the due respect for virtue and religion, freedom of thought and action, that we may all execute the laws with justice and mercy. May we seek to restrain crime, especially the burdensome vice of corruption and its related immoralities that cost the citizens resources, yielding to desperation, even premature death for lack of essential services. We pray for all of us, Holy Father, gracious one. We gather here to celebrate this wonderful time and the leadership in our university. We thank you for our outgoing treasurer, who will remain ours as the emeritus treasurer, the man of wisdom, sacrifice, vision, always excited in love and generosity, especially to the least members of the society through transformative platform and projects. Give him more energy of mind, soul, and resources to reach out to more. And we pray for the incoming that good and loving God, our source of love, light and wisdom, bless him that he begin to the right begins this right of new leadership with your wisdom, with your love, and with your support. Bless us, your family, the family of men and women taking up our responsibility as a sacred duty. And we pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Father, the Son. Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. Please take your seat. As I invite our Vice Chancellor, Professor Roman Kogendo, to come to greet the Inauguration Assembly of the Chancellor of Mary University of Science and Technology. Welcome, sir. In accordance with the University Charter Part 2, Section 2, and the Statute 5, Section 38, and the second schedule of the Act on Appointment of University Chancellor, I declare this assembly the second inauguration ceremony of the Chancellor of Mary University of Science and Technology. Thank you, Mr. Chancellor Sir. Today we are in celebration mood, and uh, we have three groups that are going to entertain us today. We have a folk song from Mary University, students, and we have our beautiful ladies from Kaga Girls who are going to present a choral tradition of women, Mag Net. I would request the group that is performing the folk song to start moving towards the pavilion. The other group is our students who are also presenting a choral and a song. And the choral is Home of Science and Technology. And a song entitled Asante Kwa Mungu, because today we are thanking God for the favor he has given us by appointing a new chancellor, the second chancellor of Mary University, we thank God and we appreciate him, and I'm sure we are all happy today, so I hope you have your dancing shoes. The group has promised that today we are in celebration mood. So if you are called upon to dance, please don't shy away, because we are celebrating today. Thank you.
This is one of the best performing stu students in Meru County, and this is a group that we hope to admit in the coming admissions, and we pray that we may continue partnering with them. The next group are our students who are presenting a song. Hope you'll enjoy the.
So we have our last presentation that is a choral entitled Home of Science and Technology. Karibuni.
Najivu ni ya meru ni chuo cha mkuku Chuo ni na kupenda Buni ya meru ni chuo cha mkuku Chuo ni na chupipenda Najivu ni ya meru ni chuo cha mkuku Chuo ni na chupipenda Najivu ni ya meru ni chuo cha mkuku Chuo ni na chupipenda Najivu ni ya meru ni chuo cha mkuku Chuo ni na chupipenda Transition Oh transition What a realization of true nature of friendships you are Oh transition For words can scarcely convey My propensity Your transition But you bring to transition Because the greatest tragedy of this period Is the appalling silence of the good people Ladies and gentlemen we are used to gather here to experience the transition of graduates into the marketplaces. After the confirmment of their various degrees, power to write and to read and to do all that pertains to their various degrees has been confirmed. But mabadiliko ya chancellor Na hii mabadiliko siya upande hii Hii mabadiliko This is so because Of the matrix On governance of public universities I mean The universities act of 2012 A chancellor Is appointed into office For a term of 5 years and after that five years, he or she is reappointed for one term for five years. This is to me, if we join the university in the year 2020, 2013, 2013, that's why ladies and gentlemen, we are gathered here not only to celebrate, but also to be him forward. This is because transitions are a time of reflection and a time for looking forward. It is a time for reflection because when you join the university, Dr. James Wangi, the university was as dark as a thousand night by Sasha Ola. It is as shiny as a green on a luxurious sedan. It is a time of reflection and looking forward because.
He has built one of the largest support programs for educating the needy. Mr. Chancellor, sir, I take this opportunity to read the citation in accordance with the University Charter 2, Section 2, and the Statutes 5, Section 38, and the second schedule of the Act on Appointment of the University Chancellor. It is with the humility that I invite the Vice Chancellor to read the Chancellor's citation. Vice Chancellor. Citation of Mr. Peter Ndegua, CBS, on the occasion of his inauguration as the Chancellor of Mary University of Science and Technology. Early life. Peter Ndegwa's journey from the highlands of Nyandarua's county to the pinnacle of corporate leadership began in the serene and cold environs near Nyaururu Forest. Growing up as the second of the nine children in a large 
close knit family. Legwa experienced the simplicity and challenges of rural life that shaped his character in profound ways. He schooled in Gai Daidia Primary School, which is situated amidst the, the breathtaking landscape that lead to the famous Thomas Falls in a household where financial resources were modest, being the second born meant early responsibilities. The Ndegwe family, driven by a desire for, the, for their children to achieve what they hadn't, provided a nurturing environment that emphasized the value of hard work, the value of integrity, and the passive of education as a gateway to opportunities. Navigating the rural environment of Nyandarwa County, young Degwa discovered the importance of a family support and responsibility. As a second born, he found himself taking on more significant roles at an early age, eventually realizing that supporting his siblings would become a response intertwined with his future. The upbringing in Yandarwa instilled in him a strong work ethic. were not just mentors. They were benevolent guides who believed in the potential of every student. This early exposure to positive role models and an educational system that valued hard work and integrity became the cornerstone on Legua's character today. Transitioning to Stare for secondary education was a pivotal moment in Degwa's life. The, legend, the legend, legendary Dr. Geoffrey Griffin, the late founder of Stare, became a formidable influence in Degwa's life. Stare, with its emphasis on equalizing opportunities through education, exposed Degwa to a world of possibilities. The school's ethos embodied by Dr. Griffin encouraged students to challenge authority and the status quo, instilling in them the importance of speaking up for what they believe in. Stare not only provided an excellent education, but also taught Ndegwa the value of volunteering and the value of giving back to the community. During holidays, Students engage in volunteer services, fostering a sense of social responsibility. This experience left a lasting impact and impression on Degwa, shaping his belief in transformative power of education and community engagement. Reflecting on his journeys, Degwa often recalls that the people who shaped him the most were the ordinary teachers from his primary school and his parents. These early influencers, coupled with the inspiring leadership of Mr. Griffin Astare, laid a solid foundation for a man who embodies the principles of integrity, the principles of hard work, and standing up for one's beliefs throughout his illustrious character. Career. Career. Price Waterhouse Coopers, that is PWC, a journey of a thousand miles. Following the successful completion of his bachelor's degree in economics from the University of Nairobi, Mr. Peter Ndegwa embarked on an illustrious career, demonstrating not only academic excellence, but also a commitment to professional development. His journey commenced in 1992 when he joined Price Waterhouse Coopers, one of the world's leading professional services firms. Degwa's initial roles at Price Waterhouse was in the audit management functions, where 
he honed his skills and gained valuable insights into financial systems and practices. His exceptional performances during the, these foundational years led to a significant milestone, a secondment to the United Kingdom on the Farms Talents Development Program. In pursuit of further academic and professional growth, Ndegwa pursued his Masters of Business Administration, MBA, at the prestigious London Business School. His tenure in the UK not only enriched his academic portfolio, but also provided invaluable international exposure. Engaging with corporate value, consulting, and contributing to the banking and capital markets accountancy teams. Ndegwa undertook key assignments at leading European and American banks and insurance business. This period of working in diverse environments instilled in him the qualities of openness, qualities of tolerance, London being the bank, banking capital, demanded a level of self-proving that contributed to his personal and professional development. After earning his MBA, Degwa continued to work in London for Pricewaterhouse, showcasing expertise in project management and contributing significantly to corporate advisory projects. Upon re returning home to Kenya in 2002, he liberated his international experience at Pricewaterhouse concentrating on corporate advisory in the financial services sector. In this role, he took on strategic transactions advice, due diligence valuations, financial planning, and modeling, demonstrating leadership and project management capabilities. His dedication and passion for excellence propelled him through the ranks at Pricewaterhouse, showcasing his leadership acumen. Over the course of 11 years, Degwa's journey at Pricewaterhouse saw him rise from the audit manager to executive manager, ultimately leaving an unforgettable imprint and associate, as, as, as an associate director in the year 2003. Degwa's tenure at Price Waterhouse not only shaped his expertise in financial services, but also instilled in him a holistic understanding of corporate dynamics, professional project management, and the importance of international exposure in globalized business landscape. These experiences laid the, hard, the, the groundwork for his future leadership roles setting the stage for the impactful career that would unfold in the years to come. East African Breweries Limited, the EABL, the Bulls by the Horns. After an impressive 11-year tenure at Pricewaterhouse, Mr. Peter Ndegwa embraced a new challenge, transitioning to East African Breweries Limited, EABL, this move marked a shift from the precision of financial consulting to the dynamic world of the beverage industry, presenting both challenges and opportunities. Joining East African Breweries Limited, Degwa initially assumed the role of Group Strategy Director. In this capacity, he led the strategy function, playing a pivotal role in developing a new strategy for East African Breweries Limited in the year 2004. This strategy, a five-year vision and mission, not only raised the bar for strategic environment development, but also contributed to the creation of the iconic Senator Keg brand. Those of you who taste this, I know you love it. This value brand transformed the category becoming one of the most successful innovations for, the, for the, the Agio Africa. It also fostered a strong partnership with the Kenya government, curbing the consumptions 
of illicit brews, increasing local raw materials use, and boosting job creation. The Senator brand was featured in the Harvard Business Review as a story of success, courtesy of our Chancellor. In the year 2006, Ndegwa's leadership journey at East African Brewers Limited continued as he was promoted to sales director. In this role, he spearheaded a massive and radical change program within the sales and commercial ag uh, agenda in Kenya. Ndegwa drove transformative changes in brand plan, exec execution, and customer services significantly improving the route to market and the capabilities of sales and commercial, commercial teams. This strategy shift resulted in a substantial growth trajectory for the business across various market segments and channels in this drinks industry. His success in sales direct role led to his elevation to group finance director in the year 2008. As the group CEO, Degwa had end-to-end -end accountability to finance, procurement, supply chain, name it, and information systems for the East African uh, Breweries Limited group and its subsidiaries spanning six countries. As a board member of EABL, a publicly listed business with a robust board of directors, Degwa played a, cru a crucial role in shaping the strategic and commercial agenda. His impact was felt in revenue growth, cost containment, and organizational restructuring to optimize performance during challenging periods. During his tenure, Ndegwa not only played a central role in the business development agenda, including the acquisition of Serengeti Breweries Limited in Tanzania, but also an wound, compl a complex cross-shareholding structure with a direct competitor. Ndegwa's journey, ladies and gentlemen, at East African Breweries Limited showcased not only his ability to navigate complex business landscape, but also his transformative leadership that led an enduring impact on the company and the industry at large. His strategic visions and operational acumen contributed significantly to the growth and success of East African Breweries Limited during his tenure. At the Gale a visionary leadership journey. In the year 2001, Mr. Peter Ndegwa transitioned to Diageo, marking a pivotal moment in his career. Appointed as the managing director and CEO at Diageo, Ghana, he confronted the challenges of a highly competitive market. Tasked with end-to-end -end accountability for the profit and loss that is P&L and commercial objectives, Ndegwa led a comprehensive reframing of the business. Despite external challenges like currency devaluations and showing, slowing GDP growth, he achieved remark remarkable results, including growth in core brands, a transformative route to consumer and supply chain robust innovations and a significant shift in the external reputation. His successes in Ghana paved the way for an, an even more challenging role. In the year 2015, Degwa assumed the position of Managing Director and CEO of Guinea's Nigeria PLC facing economic challenges in a country reliant on oil and limited diversification, he navigated the company through a period of economic volatility, implementing radical organizational change 
changes and strategic shift. Ndegu achieved double-digit growth, distinguishing himself as a corporate turnaround artist. By the time he left Nigeria in the year 2018, June, the company's share price had risen up by 50%. The year 2018 marked a historical milestone in Indegua's career as he was appointed Managing Director Continental Europe and Russia, becoming the first African to hold such a position. He oversaw business operations in 50-plus countries across Western and Eastern Europe, Russia, the Middle East, and North Africa. Managing the Ageo spirits and be a business, Ndegua demonstrated strategic foresight and operational excellence on the global stage. This expansion, ladies and gentlemen, this expansion of responsibilities included overseeing the full profit and loss and growth of the Diageo's the, the spirits and be a business. Leaving, leading diverse business units each with general manager, he continued to drive overall business success. Ndegwa's journey at the Ageos from 2011 to 2018 reflects a visionary, lead visionary leadership style marked by transformative strategies and agenda impressive turnarounds and a consistent drive for excellence on the global stage. His legacy as a strategic leader, leader capable of steering multinational corporations towards sustained growth and success was firmly established during this period. A man is in own shoes. That is being a CEO of a safari com. Amidst the challenge brought by the COVID-19 pandemic in April 2020, Mr. Peter Ndegwa took the helm as the chief executive at Safaricom PLC, a leading telecommunication company in Africa renowned for pioneering mobile payment services through M-Pesa. He took over following the passing on of Bob Colimo and the general sentiment of many was that he had big shoes to fit in. With over 25 years of extensive experience in general management, commercial and business strategy sales, and finance operation across Africa and Europe, Ndegwa brought a wealth of leadership acumen to Safaricom. As the CEO, Ndegwa ushered in a transformative vision for Safaricom, aiming to be a purpose-led technology company. His strategy focus includes leveraging technology to, bro to broaden service delivery beyond payments, encompassing credits, cashless solutions, wealth management, and financial services penetration to enhance financial security and health. Under Ndegwa's leadership, Safaricom has adopted agile ways of working methodologies and customer-centric approaches. He introduced key elements such as purpose-driven organizational goals, innovations, customer centricity, and collaborations eliminating silos to enhance efficiency. Ndegwa has successfully revitalized Safaricom by shifting its focus to impacting society, to fostering innovations, and being a customer-centric and promoting collaboration. Despite the many challenges, key achievement during his tenure includes expanding 4G coverage, reducing data and voice prices by 65% and 40% respectively, affordable credits 
that is for Lisa, by 50% and Mpesa tariffs by approximately 50%. This led to tripling data usage in three years, doubling the value of transactions through Mpesa and significantly increasing the number of agents for, for Lipa and um, Mpesa. Degwa has also launched the first of its kind device assembly plant, that is the EADAC, to ease access to 4G device. It is during Degwa's tenure that Safaricom, together with other partners of the Global Partnership for Ethiopia, set up a subsidiary, Safaricom Telecommunication Ethiopia. Its leadership style, characterized by a commitment to simplify business processes, talent development, and fostering a strong, inclusive culture, has, clear, has created a sustainable, a sustainable business for the future at Safaricom. Furthermore, Degwa's ability to inspire and motivate his team, coupled with strategic acumen, has left an indelible, an indelible mark on the company. Safaricom, valued at $3.4 billion, stands as the sole tele, tele company in sub-Saharan Africa, embracing sustainable development goals, the SDG and environmental, social, and, and the governance, that is the ESG principle, ensuring sustainability across its operation. Degoa's visionary leadership continues to shape Safaricom traje trajectory, making a profound impact on the lives of individuals within the company and beyond. Honors and award. Mr. Peter Ndegwa's exceptional leadership and contribution to the corporate landscape have been recognized through a series of prestigious honors and awards. Notably, he was honored with the Chief of the Order of the Burning Sphere, our, our CBS First Class, a distinguished accolade bestowed by the President of the Republic of Kenya in December 2023. This prestigious order acknowledges Ndegwa's outstanding services rendered to the nation across various capacities and responsibility. Additionally, he was associated with Safaricom PLC during this recognition, highlighting the significant impact he had had on the telecommunication giant in this country and beyond. Furthermore, attesting to his influential uh, presence in the digital realm, Mr. Ndegwa secured, secured a spot on the Africa Reports Africa Digital Top 40 list in the November 2021. Again, this recognition associated with Safaricom PLC places him among the top leaders in telecom, investment, startups, and public decision makers across the African continent, reinforcing his status as a key figure in the digital, digital landscape. These honors affirm Degwa's remarkable achievement and leadership prowess on both national and continental stage, stages. Charity and Foundation. Education and the empowerment of others through mentorship is a cherished personal value of Mr. Ndegwa. Beyond his corporate achievements, he has consistently demonstrated a deep commitment and desire to philanthropy and community development. At the heart of his charitable endeavors is his involvement with the Safaricom and the Mpesa Foundation, a testament to Safaricom PLC dedication in driving initiatives, uh, initiatives that address various social challenges, contributing to the well-being of communities and individuals, and touching people's hearts. Ndegwa plays a pivotal role in both foundations, leveraging the transformative power 
of connectivity and mobile money to make a positive difference in education, in health and economic empowerment. Under his guidance, the foundation have become catalysts for meaningful changes, reaching diverse sectors and making a tangible impact on the lives of many, starting from Kenya. Furthermore, Ndegwa serves as the chairman of the National Steering Committee on the Drought Response, showcasing his commitment to disaster and humanitarian relief efforts. Since November 2022, he has led mobile technology for social benefits or leading responses to humanitarian crisis, Peter Ndegwas exemplifies a leader dedicated to making a lasting impact on communities and bringing significant individual change in communities too. The personal values and guiding principles just about to come to an end here humility and integrity at the heart of Mr. Peter Andegua's character lies a profound humility grounded in his upbringing in a large modest family this family coexists with unswavering and wavering commitment to integrity a value instilled early in life whether navigating the cold weather on the way to school or leading Safaricom, these principles guide his actions and decisions. He values simplicity and has never let success get to his head. Resilience and long-term perspective. Ndegwa views life as a marathon, a relay, emphasizing the importance of resilience in facing both success and challenges. His experience has shaped a perspective that transcends short-term disappointment, fostering a commitment to endurance and fo a focus on long-term goals while remaining open to continuous learning. He considers himself an introvert and his depth of analysis to, event, to events is deep. He is action oriented and believes in impactful change. Consequences of transformative leadership. Conscious decision making and self management Still talking on his personal values. Conscious decision making is a hallmark on Degwa's personal and professional philosophy. He advocates for being present in the moment, ring fencing time for family, and maintaining emotional and mental balance through disciplines, disciplined self management. These values form the foundation for sustained personal and professional success. In the words of a business daily writer, Peter embodies the posture of a bureaucrat, a bureaucrat, the demeanor of a corporate hack, and most importantly, the soul of a leader whose impact extends far beyond the boundaries of the business world. 
he has proved that he is not fitting in anyone's shoes. Is the cobbler of his shoes. He makes it himself. Chancellor's appointment. On 1st November 2023, our president, Dr. William Samoy Ruto, appointed Mr. Peter Ndegwa as the new chancellor of Mary University of Science and Technology for a period of five years. So now we have a very important session. Uh, the Chancellor will rise in readiness for the installation and robbing. Installation and robbing. No security concerns. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. James Mwangi, the former Chancellor of Mary University of Science and Technology, will now hand over the instruments of power uh, to our new Chancellor, Mr. Peter Ndegwa. We'll, start, we'll go in this order. We'll start with the mess. We'll start with the mess. And uh, just remind us that we will not move the mess. We'll just touch it. Symbolic. We'll just touch it. Um, so I request the Chancellor to go near. Just touch it, we will not move it. That's our first tool of governance, the first instrument of power, the maze. Thank you, sir. We will not move it. 
The second instrument of power is the university charter that will now be handed over to our new chancellor. Now that's the charter. And now to the chancellor. Thank you, sir. The third tool of governance the third tool of governance is the university logo. The university logo will be handed over at this point. The university logo. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And now the last tool of governance, the last instrument of power is the university statutes, which will be handed over right now. Thank you very much. We may take our seat. Shall we have a photo, a photo session kindly? Sorry about that. A photo session and requesting, we are requesting the investment management board can join as well and the council, the university council. The Vice Chancellor is present and the CEOs present. Please join the team for a photo session. Vice Chancellor is present. The CEOs present. Please join our Chancellor for a photo session. And I see Professor Linus Gitonga from Karatina University. Welcome, Prof. Wonderful. So you may now have your seats. Thank you so much for coming. As I request our Vice Chancellor to invite the Chancellor to make his acceptance speech. Professor Romano Sogiambo, please. Mr. Chancellor, sir, congratulations. I now invite you to make your own acceptance speech. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, all protocols observed. I'll just read uh, the Chancellor's acceptance citation. I Peter Waititu Ndegwa accept to perform the functions of the Chancellor uh, of Meru University Science and Technology. That as far as the speech goes. <laughs> Thank you.
want to read the key milestone of Dr. James Mwangi Ndegwa, CBS, on the occasion of his farewell as the first chancellor of Mary University of Science and Technology, a man we are so proud of and love in this university. A decade of prosperity with Dr. James Mwangi at Mary University of Science and Technology. Dr. James Mwangi was the founding chancellor of Mary University of Science and Technology, 1st March 2013 to 2023, a position he held with dedication, commitment, and passion for a decade. Dr. Mwangi, who serves as the Group Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer of Equity Group Holdings, holds a Bachelor of Commerce degree and is a certified public accountant. He is a graduate of the Advanced Management Program, Strathmore Business School, Barcelona, Spain. He has a wide experience in the banking and finance services industry and entrepreneurship growing equity group holdings, PLC, into a regional financial services provider spanning banking, insurance, technology, social impact and health with a consolidated asset base of Kenya shillings 1.7 trillion. That is about 11.4 billion US dollars. A customer base of over 19 million and rated as the fourth strongest banking brand in the world by Brand France on 29th August 2014. Dr. Mwangi was conferred the honorary degree of Doctor of Business Management by Mary University of Science and Technology in recognition of the use of his talents as an entrepreneurial organizer and a mover of human and material resource, resources for the benefit of the country, the continent, and the world. Mwangi holds five other honorary doctorate degrees, a Doctor of Business Administration from Kenya Methodist University, a Doctor of Human Le Humane Letters from Kenyatta University, Doctor of Entrepreneurship from Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology, Doctor of Letters from Africa Nazarene University, and Doctor of Science in Financial Innovations from Asinde Muliro University of Science and Technology. Dr. Mwangi is a recipient of a first class chief of order of the Burning Spear CPS, CBS, the Moran of the Burning Spears MBS, the head of state co commendation HHSC, who's a Lendo, that is Patriotism Awards, and named among Kenyan national heroes and legends in 2011. He's also the winner 2020 Oslo Business for Peace Award. Bloomberg 50. 2019, Ernst and Young's World Entrepreneurs of the Year 2012, International Planned Parenthood Federation IPPF Award for Philanthropy 2012, Financial Times Top 50 Emerging Market Business Leaders and the 20 Most Influential People in Africa 2011. It was named the Forbes Person of the Year in 2012 and is a holder of the 2007 Global Vision Award. He was also named the Banker of the Year during the 4th Banker Africa, East Africa Award 2017. Dr. Mwangi was the founding chairman of Kenya's Vision 2030 Delivery Board from its inception in 2007 to 2019. Charged with the responsibility of, of ensuring Kenya becomes a middle income country with global high standards of living by the year 2030. He is a man 
who needs no introduction in the African continent and indeed globally. The accolades of Dr. Mwangi cannot be overstated. He is a self-made enigma whose achievements are well documented. We at Meru University feel extremely privileged to have had part of him to be our Chancellor for the last 20 years and for this we are really indebted to you sir. During the university first graduation ceremony on 26 July 2013, Dr. Mwangi and his family donated to the University of Kenya shillings 100 million for the construction of a modern iconic innovation and entrepreneurship center. That's where all our students go and dream after going in class, after being taught. That's where once they are a bit stressed, they go to shed off the stress. That's where they go and take their beautiful pictures. We can clap for our outgoing chancellor. In Meru County, we often remark that this building is one of the most photographed buildings in the country. County. The center has been well utilized as it has incubated a good number of innovations, some of which have won national and international awards. On conservation of environment, Dr. Mwangi, through Equity Bank and the Equity Group Foundation, is key on promoting sustainable finance by concentrating on people and the planet. Mary University's beneficiary of this initiative, where Dr. Mwangi has led in the planting of trees on approximately 76 acres of land, giving a forest cover of 14% above national average. Most places in Kenya just range between 7 to 12. But right now we are actually 14%. Again, a big clap for our outgoing chancellor. And he dreamt about this before the concept of climate change came. So he assembled with a foresight, transformed this desert into a green university. We are again very proud of you, sir. And we do, you have done this to increase the country's contribution towards addressing climate change. It is also an opportunity to engage the youth in environmental conservation, as well as providing opportunity to earn an income through tree planting and maintenance activities. In one of the days when we were planting trees, Mwangi brought all his workers in the bank and spent a whole day here in rain and planting trees. We pledge to continue with this noble venture in your legacy and invite the first chancellor to continue holding our hands in conservation of the environment as we usher in our new chancellor. In this spirit of wing in the spirit of Wings to Fly, an initiative by Dr. James Mwangi, Mary University has benefited from the employment of a, over a hundred alumni at Equity Bank in these areas when there are no jobs. That means, averagely, every year, Equity has been employing at least 10 people, 10 of our graduates. We can clap again. The Wings to Fly Scholarship and Mentorship Program supports scholars' holistic development through four facets. Encourage academic excellence, encourage developing a value-centered life, encourage nurturing transformative leadership, and encourage embracing a culture giving, of giving back. Throughout the decade, 
As a chancellor at Mass, Dr. James Mwangi employed all the four facets in, in mentoring both staff and students at the university. Indeed, the university community, sir, could not have had a better experience in the past 10 decades under your leadership as, a, as our chancellor. The peak of academic experience at university is the graduation ceremony. But as we all know, the chief guest and the priest of graduation is always the chancellor. Graduation under Dr. Sorry, Dr. James Mwangi has presided successfully over 10 graduation ceremonies at Mass. Graduation ceremonies are an opportunity for graduates to celebrate their success in education. They provide platform for the graduates to express their experiences at the university through representatives. They also bring together parents, students, graduates, members of staff, academic and non-academic staff, the alumni, and all other st stakeholders. With Dr. James Mwangi as our chancellor the last 10 years, our students have been greatly inspired during these ceremonies. Mwangi is the one man when he is around, you don't even feel him. He just mixes very easily. But for our students, you have always had a grandfather when he's together with his children, he likes more the wings to fly children. They feel the grandpa has come. And we will miss the many dinners during the graduation, uh, a, 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 a night before graduation, the many dinners you used to hold for them. They also, the icing on the cake for Mary University in particular has been that through Dr. Mwangi students with first class honors in skills needed for banking have been employed at Equity Bank. His leadership style has also been contributing great, immensely to the stability of the university. For all of you, our friends, our guests, and our students, Mary University through Dr. Mwangi leadership he has passed through all kind of things, like a business car, business car, suicidal like this, very low, then come, uh, coming up, and um, through his advice, through his counsel, we can only say this far, the Lord has been faithful. Can we clap for Mwangi? <laughs> Jehovah has been Ebenezer. That's what we confess with Dr. James Mwangi tutelage here. In good times and difficult times at the university, his leadership has been outstanding. We have weathered storm together. And we have also celebrated success together in the past decade. I remember the last storm we had was last year in February. And uh, I'd gone home. And I think, sir, you remember you calling me very late. Vice Chancellor, what is happening? And uh, soon, my boss, the PS, and the CS called me that I should come back. That is James Mwangi for you. When you are low there, he shows up. In 2022, Equity Bank, in partnership with Microsoft, organized a virtual hackathon where Mary University and University of Nairobi students were eligible to participate. The aim of the hackathon was to drive sustained innovations and crowd source solutions to address day-to-day -day business and social challenges in payments, financial inclusions, and know your customer mathematic areas. The winners walked away with exciting prizes, including cash and more exciting a three months mentorship opportunity from Microsoft. Some winners of this competition from Mass also secured employment with Equity Bank. 
we are convinced that this change came to mass because of the influence of our able first chancellor. Due to his outstanding status in Kenya and Africa and globally, Dr. James Mwangi has been a unifying figure among stakeholders at the university. We have not always had a smooth going, but during our stormy seasons, it is the sagacious actions of Dr. Mwangi that has steered the university out of the stormy waters when the ship was almost capsizing and brought it back on the track. Dr. Mwangi and his family are philanthropists by excellence, and perhaps nowhere has this been felt more profoundly than here at Meru University of Science and Technology. Again, we congratulate you and we appreciate you. Let's clap for him. He set up the Wings to Fly initiative, which provides scholarship to needy students in Kenya. Together with his family, they have made several contributions, including four million US dollars in donation to support the COVID-19 response in Kenya, Rwanda, and DRC Congo. 500,000 US dollars for Nyagatugu Secondary School in his home village. He has never forgotten where he came from. And 300,000 US dollars each to both the African Leadership Academy, South Africa, and the Church House in Uganda. At Mary University of Science and Technology, we have not only benefited by getting an innovation center worth 100 million Kenya shillings, but also by, fulfill, by utilizing all his honoraria, honorarium payments in planting trees at the university, both for beauty and for conservation of the environment. Again, we thank you. The little money that we were supposed to be paying him for 10 years has never taken a cent, but he said we use it to plant trees. Can you clap for him? <laughs> to honor these efforts, the university has named the area where the trees grow, Dr. James Mwangi Forest. Therefore, today, as we release our first and founding chancellor from this noble duty, we feel honored, proud, privileged, and respected to have had him here in this capacity. We thank the government, our good government of Kenya, under His Excellency President Samoy Ruto, for uh, giving us another excellent chancellor the one who makes his own shoes. Can we put our hands together just as we appreciate the Kenyan government for this? I remember my friend, the Chancellor, asking me, Vice Chancellor, who are we going to bring back here? And uh, I really want to appreciate our council chair together with the council members. This was not easy. And uh, Dr. Mwang, even as you go, I think you value this university so much because I know your hands was also in, 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 in picking on Mr. Peter Ndegwa. And we really thank you for that. Can you clap also for that? Please? We want to thank your family for, let us, for letting us have you for 10 years and influencing us making us a forest when we were just an ordinary desert here, a typical village polytechnic. We appreciate your colleagues at Equity Group for allowing you to serve us. I know you have so many, but there's one lady here called Nancy. It's amazing. And I think you are good workers. That's what I can say. We appreciate her, 
because it's the closest we have around here together with our workers. We especially thank the village of Nyagatugu, Kangema, for this game. I think when the young Mwangi was born, I don't know, maybe it's my senior, I can't say his age. The parents thought it was only going to be that place. But today you have impacted the whole world. And so we want to thank your parents and thank everybody. We thank Dr. Mwangi for everything. We say please keep doing good and everything you can in making the world a better place for current and the future generation to come. Asante sana, may God bless you. It is now with great humility that I invite Dr. James Mwangi to cut the farewell cake. Thank you. Mr. Chancellor Sir, as the cake is coming, I would like to invite the former Chancellor, the Chancellor, the Chairperson of Council, and the Vice Chancellor, and their spouses to please move forward as we cut this farewell cake to celebrate our first Chancellor. Dr. James Mwangi, we treasure you. We pray that God may give you long life to impact this country. And the cake reads to a lasting legacy at Meru University of Science and Technology. Thank you, Dr. James Mwangi. We appreciate you and we pray that God may continue guiding you as you impact all those who you have mentored. Let us appreciate the Chancellor. This is a symbolic cake to bid him farewell and to thank him for the work that he has done at Meru University of Science and Technology. So as we cut the cake, we will request that we all have a bite. Of the cake. The cake is being cut by the former chancellor, the current chancellor, and their spouses and the vice chancellor and the chairperson of council. Thank you very much. We appreciate all of you. We will now be served with a slice of the cake. You may take your seats. The slice will be brought to your table. I'm requesting ushers, please. Ushers, please come and assist. Since this is a symbolic cake, we are requesting that uh, those who have cut the cake and their guests to have a bite. It is not a big cake, so it may not be able to get to the crowd. So, ushers, you will distribute the cake to the guests at the pavilion and we hope that they'll enjoy it. It looks a delicious cake and we appreciate all those who are involved in procuring the cake and the bakers. We appreciate that they have made a beautiful cake and it is a cake to bid farewell to an outstanding personality in our country and a blessing to Meru University. So enjoy the cake.
thank you as we do a symbolic tasting of the cake the others will get later maybe let me Mr. Chancellor, sir, let me recognize some of the guests we have had. Of course, I know Dr. Beatrice Sinyangala, our PS State Department of University of Higher Education and Research, will speak with us later. But PS, we are forever indebted to you. And thank you for always standing with us. My friend and classmate, Professor Linus Gitonga, the Vice Chancellor of uh, Karatina University. Professor Isaac Kosge, a close friend of mine, the Vice Chancellor of Moi University. Uh, Professor Joyce Agalo, past apology, that is the Vice Chancellor of Machakos University. Again, a close friend, Professor Dixon Andala, the CEO of NRF. Thank you for coming. We work on a place of research, professors and students. Please follow him. That's why he came here. So follow him. Uh, Charles Ringera, again. When I first him, Simnajua Ringera, he's here. And uh, Professor Mike Kuria, represented by, again, a good friend of mine, Professor Mutewa who is the one in charge of accrediting programs. I think he's around, Professor Mutuiwa. Again, a close friend, Christian friend of mine, Professor Engineer Douglas, Douglas Sitanda, VC Seku, is here. We have, I'm not sure whether he has come. My, my Vice Chancellor, because I'm also a professor in JKUAT, Professor Victoria Ngumi, VC JKUAT. Professor Ngumi, please stand. That is my Vice Chancellor. Thank you for coming, and I hope I'm still PF 1263. <laughs> you guys have to play. After this, there's a life after. Then Professor Eukarya Kenya, that is, uh, he represents the VC who was not able to come. That's the DVC planning. Then Professor James. Kahinda, uh, Kahindi, a good friend also, Vice Chancellor Pwani University. Professor Mtua, Vice Chancellor Technical University of Kenya. I know the list is long. If I don't read it, when I go to their place, they'll not read my name. <laughs> Professor Laela Bukaka, Abukaka could not come but sent apology. My good friend, the Chief Principal of Meru National Polytechnic, Professor Dr. Mr. Mutembei, thank you for coming. And our, our chair of alumni, the museum who is always there with us, Mkuru architect Dr. James Kimathi is here. A good friend of the university who is also the chair of KFIS, Honorable Dr. Joseph M. Ruaki. Professor Rotich, the VC Laikipia, thank you for coming. And then this... This list is not in any priority, so don't feel let, bad if I call you later. Dr. Pamela Wor Chiang Odiambo, the VC Sports, plus uh, I think there's Dennis Odiambo, there's Tony Odiambo, there's Grace Odiambo, and there's Benjamin Odiambo. They just represent a family of 14. Then uh, our friend, Dr. Agnes Masi Wahome, the CEO of Coops, is here. Students, this is the lady who admitted you here, she's here. Again, a good friend of mine who is the CEO of University Funding Board, Mr. Geoffrey Munai, Munari, thank you for coming. We had Professor Munavu up to this morning, but he had to rush back to Nairobi for some uh, uh, meeting, but pass his, uh, his, his congratulations to our Chancellor. Professor Veronica Nyaga, Taraka University, representing the VCs, the DVC Academic. And then our juries, thank you, Aziz. You donated for us the land, and we always celebrate you. They are here. We have Joseph at Muranguri, the Secretary General. We have Ben Mutunga, the, uh, one of the leaders. We also have Professor Wilson Geruit, 
University of Eldoret, Professor Charlie Sokioga, Kisi University, and Professor Theophilus Mutui, MD Kefis. Now, our Chancellor has come with the family, and they are here, led by, of course, him, he'll talk later on, but there's uh, Dr. Jemima Waititu, the spouse of the Chancellor, together with uh, Martha Irungu, Peter Ndweti, Mike Mbaka, Faith Mbaka, Daniel Ndegua. I mean, the list is long. And then, Chancellor, don't, don't feel that I don't respect your people, but you have brought almost 50 people from Safaricom. Can they just stand we see them? 50 people from Safaricom. The others are seated inside you guys there, you will not know them. But thank you so much. I remember when I went to the history, when uh, James Mwangi was being inaugurated, he came with 30 officers from equity. And I think today the new chancellor has broken your record. <laughs> I think the others I'll read later on. I think I can stop there. And thank you for coming. We really celebrate you, our guests, for coming really to see when we are inaugurating our second chancellor. Thank you, sir. So at this point, uh, we want to have the presentation of the memento. And I want to invite uh, the chancellor and uh, the, vice, the chairperson of council and the vice chancellor to, to lead us in this. Vice chancellor, sir. And as this happens, we will be requesting one of our council members, Lucy, to please uh, come forward and uh, read the philosophical message behind uh, the memento. Mr. Chancellor, sir, allow me to read the philosophical message of this memento to the former Chancellor. Dedication to Dr. James Mwangi for the 10 years he has served Mary University of Science and Technology as the Chancellor. The eagle with eaglets symbolizes the leadership and the nurturing environment fostered under your guidance. Dr. James Mwangi. It also encapsulates the collective gratitude and admiration of the university community for your enduring dedication and contributions. It serves as a timeless reminder of a decade of transformative leadership and the lasting legacy you have left at Meru University of Science and Technology. The eagle, with its wings outstretched, represents your visionary leadership and wisdom which constantly spurred the university to scan and scale the uncharted heights of science and technology and to keep at the leading edge of innovation. It symbolizes your ability to navigate challenges and guide the university to new heights. You never spared your exposure and experience during the 10 years you served Mary University of Science and Technology. The protective stance of the eagle 
over its eaglet symbolizes your role as a mentor and protector to Mary University of Science and Technology. The eaglet represents the students, faculty, staff, and the community. The eagle's role as a protector and provider for its young ones symbolizes your leadership and guidance in nurturing the potential of the students and faculty at the university and lovingly encouraging them to take flight. It also symbolizes your enduring legacy and the growth experienced by the university during your tenure. Just as the eagle nurtures its young, you have nurtured the environment of learning, innovation, and academic excellence at Mary University of Science and Technology. The 10-year milestone is a significant achievement and the eagle with his eaglets serves as a, as a testament to a decade of dedicated service, transformative leadership, and positive impact on the academic and institutional landscape. Eagles have exceptional eyesight, representing the ability to see things clearly and from great distances, which is associated with leadership and foresight. You have led the university with keen foresight, focusing on the growth of the university in many aspects. We will forever be grateful for your generous gift of the Innovation and Incubation Center from your family. It has already spurred innovation and mentored many current and future innovators. Like the eagle, you have provided a nest for eaglets to test and try their wings on innovation to this university and through its incubation aspect to the Kenyan and African communities. We are learning to fly and hope that sometimes in the future, we shall be stars you have always desired to see lighting the skies of Africa. Thank you, Dr. James Mwangi. We love you. A big hand. shortly be inviting our vice chancellor to invite our former chancellor to make his farewell speech it is with great humility that I now invite Dr. James Mwangi to make his farewell speech. Uh, to the Chancellor of Meru University of Science and Technology, uh, Dr. Peter Ndegwa, the PS University Education Research, the University Council led by my friend uh, Jane Kagete, the Vice Chancellor, University Senate, University Management Board and staff, students and all invited guests. I salute you all this morning as we welcome Meru University of Science and Technology's second Chancellor. Today marks a great milestone for Meru University as, and as, as an exemplary case of effective corporate governance in the seamless transition of leadership. Allow me 
to thank the President, His Excellency Dr. William Duto, through the Cabinet Secretary, and hereby pre uh, represented the, pre the Principal Secretary, Ministry of Education, Science and Technology, for appointing Dr. Peter Degua as Chancellor to steer Meru University of Science and Technology in the journey of becoming a world-class university of excellence, science and technology. I'm deeply confident that he will bring immense value in implementing the university's vision. To our esteemed guest, invited in your respective capability, uh, capacities, we are deeply honored by your attendance. Chancellor, so after 10 years, you will have a few more words to say than I accept. <laughs> so allow me to say a few words. As my 10-year journey as your founding Chancellor comes to a cross, I'm filled with gratitude and reflection. Mr. Chancellor, I approached this assignment with great determination confident that I could have support every step of the way from the Almighty God and every stakeholder that I interacted with. I'm reminded of the profound impact that we have had jointly uh, as the various organs of the university leadership on the fabric of our university. Stakeholders, it's your passion, your dedication, and your unwavering belief in the transformative power of education that has made this journey so remarkable. Together, we have forged a community dedicated to knowledge, growth, and innovation. We have also worked seamlessly through the delicate years of formation of this institution. And we can pr proudly say that we have laid a strong and sustainable institution anchored on strong leadership and governance. The UN Sustainable Development Goals, Africa Agenda 2063 and Kenya Vision 2030 recognizes the critical role that science, technology, engineering, mathematics and innovation play in accelerating economic development through industrialization. Indeed, for Kenya to enhance its global competitiveness, shift from consume, uh, consumption into production-led economy, and to transition from a primary commodity into efficient export prom uh, promotion, manufacturing, and eventually innovation-driven economy, we have to build our technological readiness, business sophistication, and innovation. It has been a privilege to lift high the banner of Meru's universities on going aspiration of being a world-class research intensive university matching the world-renowned Lucel uh, Group universities. A World Bank report, the load to academic excellence, the making of world-class research universities highlights key ingredients including research excellence, culture, abundant and diversified research and development funding, producing bulk of original basic and applied research, academic freedom, high concentration of talented in internationalized student community and faculty, deep based of research professors, high technology transfers to economies, and monetization of research and innovation through incubators, accelerators, and spin-offs, plus appropriate governance and strategic visionary leadership in this decision making. I leave Meru University of Science and Technology with fond memories of 10 years we have worked together to bring life the vision and mission of this university. In these 10 years, I've been in situations where I have thought it's really special that I'm getting to experience this. These situations of challenge and requiring fortitude 
represented what I have truly appreciated about the role. These defining moments included processes that gave the university its all and direction to the future. We can all proud, proudly say that we now have a university that is committed to fostering a learning environment that transcends boundaries, nurtures curiosity, and cultivates the seed of innovation. Listening to our collective achievements led out by the Vice Chancellor, I'm humbled and uh, proud of the journey we have walked together. The journey has been characterized by moments of victory and moments of challenges as we adjusted to the challenges of a fast-growing institution. In the end, we can look back with gratitude at the outcome of our collective effort, a university that has become a beacon of hope, of knowledge, a hub of creativity, and a source of inspiration for all who have the privilege of being part of it. Allow me to reflect on the people and situations that made my stay as your founding chancellor remarkable in many ways. One, I celebrate the faculty and staff. Our faculty took their position as the backbone of this institution and consistently demonstrated unparalleled dedication to uh, scholarship, research, and teaching. Equally, the staff worked tirelessly and demonstrated commitment to a seamless functioning of administrative processes. Your unwavering dedication and professionalism have created an environment conducive to growth and learning. It's because of this strong sense of community in the university that we were able to go beyond uh, scholarship to execute with the great success social impact investment programs because we had created a strong and supportive community of staff, students, local community, and strategic partners. As a university family, we gained new energy that fueled up our upward climb to the top, again as evidenced by increased student enrollment, increased programs, student enrollment increased, expanded schools conducting over 10 successful graduation ceremonies, construction of uh, a modern innovation and entrepreneurship center, establishment of university journals, hosting of international conferences, employment of over 100 uh, uh, Meru University of Science uh, Technology, Almi at Equity Bank. A forestation project underway with approximately 76 acres of large planted trees and continuing to combat negative climate change. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the resilience of the equity community. <laughs> Although there are many achievements, that have given me pride during my tenure. tenure. There are certainly matters which I had, uh, I had done, I could have done better. As an organizational leader, one must embody humility and take ownership of shortcomings of the organization, not just the successes. In discharging my responsibilities as the Chancellor of Meru University of Science and Technology, I'm completely humbled by the incredible array of people who made an, uh, an equally incredible range of resources available at my disposal, ranging from sheer goodwill to opening up doors uh, to opportunities. All geared towards the massive success of Meru University of Science and Technology in the last decade. Two, our students have become exceptional, and I'm very proud of them. Of you. The output of any university is a trained and cultured graduates who go to the world to make impactful difference in society. For the last 10 years, I've had the privilege of witnessing our graduates equipped with innovative minds, energy, and enthusiasm as they step out uh, to the world to contribute to the socio-economic prosperity 
of our nation and beyond. My challenge to the current and future student is to uphold and improve on this culture of hard work, curiosity to learn, innovative and disruptive mindset to solve society's problem, and self-determination to make a difference in the world. Students who embrace this culture will find their stay at the university very short and will have no extra time to indulge in self-destructing tendencies and lesterousness. Three, the vice chancellor and management team have remained very steadfast. The professor will forever be grateful. As I reflect on the decade gone by, I'm grateful to the vice chancellor and your management team. Professor Lomano has remained steadfast even when the going was tough. He demonstrated commitment to a cause and servant leadership. I'm a strong believer that the institutions rise and fall on account of leadership. I must confess I was extremely lucky to be blessed to have a great team that worked with me flawlessly for 10 years, both as a leader but most significantly to me as a friend. And that's creating a harmonious atmosphere which enabled us to achieve a lot. In particular, the University Council, led by its chair, Dr. Kirigai, the University Senate and University Management Board constituted the arrowhead of our success. To the host community, which has provided a strong anchor, allow me to celebrate the local community for your great commitment to this university and by extension to the youth of this country. You gave this lad on which this university starts for the expansion of this university, signaling your patriotic duty to our country. In addition, you have remained strong advocates of the success of our university. I will always cherish the engagement we have had and your support in making critical decisions for the benefit of the university and students to become the Meru University we want. To all, our unity was demonstrated by our collective success. Together, we have faced the challenges head on, weathered storms and emerged stronger each time. This unity of far purpose fueled our collective resolve to push boundaries and strive for greatness. In the face of uncertainty, our community demonstrated remarkable resilience, proving that we are not merely an institution, but a family bound by a shared commitment to growth and, uh, and excellence. My transition is marked with pride and gratitude, as I hand over the mantle to my successor and Fred, Dr. Peter Degua, a colleague in industry and a remarkable visionary. I do it with great fulfillment and pride. I have complete confidence in his capability, capable hearts that will guide this institution in the future. And convinced that he will take this university on a continued path of growth and the years to come. Once again, I wish to thank His Excellency, the President, for making a great choice of a leader who will continue to infuse entrepreneurial and innovation mindset in the academic and uh, environment of this university. As you continue to light the history of this university, remember you are the authors of its future. Thank you for the incredible 10 years. And may the frame of knowledge, curiosity, collaboration continue to burn brightly. I remain emotionally engaged and committed to remain a Meru University of Science and Technology st stakeholder. I have I heard over but remain supportive and a cheerleader of Meru University of Science 
and technology. Allow me to do my final duty to Meru University of Science and Technology. P.S. I plead with you as a principal secretary, University of Education and Research, to complete the projects we started and remain uncompleted. I would have gone as a, pre, as a chancellor who remained, who, re, uh, who left and completed the project. <laughs> the principal secretary has made the commitment to complete the buildings. She's the accounting officer. So, uh, particularly the fields. And if possible, to have the water in the swimming pool next week. Allow me to invite our Chancellor and friend. And I want to make an offer to him, which was offered by our entertainers, the team of students. we could strengthen the signal of Safaricom if we can <laughs> put a mask in the university. <laughs> so that we, the network allows us to do more and truly convert this university into a digital university. But I also want, as a friend, to invite you to truly support making this university not just innovative but creative. And I believe it is best when academia intersects with industry. I did my best to bring banking and finance to the university. Our innovation center exposes the APIs of financial services. My friend, we have an opportunity to bring convergence between financial services, technology, and telecommunications. Whether it was God's foresight or prophetic uh, notion, besides our innovation center, we left a space that Safaricom can sit beside. <laughs> And truly, this is the leading technological company in the entire region. And truly, because Meru University is a university of science and technology, it can never be complete without collaboration with the leading technological and telecommunication company. I will support you. Thank you. Thank you very much for agreeing. <laughs> oh, he says that is enough. Don't ask it for anything else. But I will deliver on that. And that is the power of um, leadership. So you could imagine students. Now your innovation will not be theoretical innovation. The way you have the APIs of banking and insurance you now have the APIs of Safaricom, of Empesa, of technology, practical. And I hope uh, today, with uh, the agreement we have made before the congregation with my friend Peter, <laughs> that truly our partnership will certainly spark innovation at Meru University of Science and Technology, make it a world-class university and become the Stanford University of the Mountain Valley of Innovations. Allow me to make two more commitments. The first one is uh, from Equity Group. I don't want to, in any way, 
deter what uh, my friend Peter wants to do. So I will allow now Safaricom to continue with a great program of student uh, equity partnership. But uh, Safaricom doesn't compete with health. So allow me to call Dr. Uh, Khalil John Lotish, who heads equity up here. She already has 102 hospitals. Vice Chancellor, if Mary University of Science and Technology will be willing, will have a collaborative program where our clinical, health clinical uh, students can get attachment from equity Afia clinics. <laughs> so thank you very much, uh, Doctor. That is done because I'm the chairman of uh, Equity Group Foundation, the sponsor. And lastly, I would like to leave a continue of uh, the vibe of uh, academic association. I was very privileged, and once again I thank His Excellency the President for finding it fit that four months before my handing over, I could take over another university. I seem to have to always be given the challenges of starting university. So I'm the Chancellor of Kenya Open University, the first virtual university in this country. I came with my Vice Chancellor, uh, Professor Rija Komwenga. Rija. And I want to plead through the Council Chair, Chancellor, and Vice Chair if we can forge a collaborative relationship between our two universities. Thank you very much, uh, Mwanga. Meru University has accepted. I believe we have accepted. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Lastly, <laughs> I extend my deepest gratitude to the entire university communi uh, community, faculty, staff, students, past students or me, our supportive community members, the government of Kenya, and particularly the Ministry of um, Education represented here by the Principal Secretary, uh, University Education and Research. Your co collaboration, passion and commitment have been the driving force behind our shared success. God bless us all. God bless Meru University of Science and Technology. God bless Kenya. Thank you. Please let us all stand in honor of our former Chancellor. What a blessing. I'm sure the students are excited. They can now buy some swimming costumes. So I will invite the former Chancellor, the Chancellor, the University Council, the Permanent Secretary, the UMB members to take a photo. and the permanent secretary to remain behind for a photo. I now invite the Deputy Vice Chancellor Asad to take over.
Mr. Chancellor, sir, I take this opportunity to invite the Vice Chancellor to address the congregation. Mr. Chancellor, sir, a few guests. Because uh, you have been introduced to Professor Elijah Mwenga, the Vice Chancellor of Open University of Kenya, a good friend of mine too. Martin Muredi, who came with the, 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 the outgoing Chancellor. Martin Gitobu, Collins Mukangu, uh, James Njeru and then Dr. Joan Correr. Joan Correr, you have just to do what the Chancellor has said. Thank you. Um, our PS this, of the State Department of University Education and Research, Dr. Beatrice Muganda Nyangala, the Chancellor of Mary University of Science and Technology, Mr. Peter Ndegwa, the founding chancellor of Mary University of Science and Technology, Dr. James Mwangi. The chancellors of sisters universities that are present here. The chairperson of Mary University of Science and Technology Council. The chairpersons of councils of other universities that are present. The Meru County government representatives. My colleagues, the vice chancellors. Of other, vice of, of other universities present and the CEOs that are present here from all our various organizations. The Mary University of Science and Technology Council members, the principals, deputy principals of colleges, the members of University Council, the Mary University of Science and Technology staff and students, the Student Association of, of Mary University, that is SAMU, our staff, their staff, all the invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Today is a momentous occasion as we gather here to celebrate the inauguration ceremony of the Second Chancellor of Mary University of Science and Technology, Mr. Peter Ndegwa. This event is not only about welcoming a new leader, but also bidding a heartfelt farewell, very emotional indeed, to a chancellor who has been an exceptional steward of this great institution. Firstly, let me express our deep gratitude to the outgoing Chancellor, Dr. James Mwangi. Over the past decade, his dedication and visionary leadership have left a mark on Mary University of Science and Technology. His commitment to innovation, entrepreneurship, and environmental conservation has set a precedence for us all. The Innovations and Entrepreneurship Center, a testament to its generosity, stands tall as a symbol of progress and achievement. Through its initiatives, we have seen countless students thrive, business flourish, and environmental sustainability take center stage in our university community. Dr. Mwangi's unswavering wavering support for education exemplifies through the Wings to Fly initiative has not only provided employment opportunities for our alumni, but has also fostered a culture of holistic development and mentorship. We are indeed grateful for the 10 graduation ceremonies that Dr. James Mwangi has presided over, each one marking a milestone in the academic journey of our students. Dr. Mwangi's influence even extend beyond our borders, as evidenced by the success of our students in virtual hackathon organized by Equity Bank and Microsoft in the year 2022. As we bid you, well, fare, bid you farewell, sir, we have our chair of alumni, architect James 
uh, Kimati. And please, Kimati, here we have a Chancellor Emeritus who should actually now join a list of our eminent alumni. And you need to make sure that you get his contact. We extend our deepest appreciation for his outstanding contribution to Mary University. We are confident that his legacy will continue to inspire generations to come. Now, as we look towards the future, it is with great enthusiasm that we welcome our new Chancellor, Mr. Peter Ndegwa. Sir, you remember there was a time you called me and I didn't expect the CEO of Safaricom to call Amir Odiambo. <laughs> and uh, people sometimes say that James Mwangi is so humble, down to earth, grandfather. You talk with me so well. I was, you didn't know where I was, but I was trembling. How, how is he? <laughs> and you told me, Professor, we have always wanted to work with a science and technology university. And I've become so busy of late. And uh, I always want to put my yes on something that I know I will holistically, wholly do. So I've not made that decision. And should I say no, please get be a uh, so that we'll definitely work together. The rest is history. The difficult part is over. You finally said yes. And today we have our inauguration here. And I think we can thank God for that. Can we clap? <laughs> I've met you twice, perhaps with our chair or council. And the first time we were just in the call, and then the second time we found somebody very down to earth, somebody very humble, somebody who is focused, somebody who respects time. He tells me we meet at seven, and one minute to seven is there at the door. And for the students, you are so lucky to have heard James Mwangi. We tell him, let your chopper lunch here at 8 30. And at 8.30, James Mwang is down here. We agreed with the new chancellor that his chopper should land here at around 8.20, and his chopper was here. And you, the students, now the, the, the whole place is packed. We agreed you were to be here at 7.40. You came at 10 a.m. <laughs> Learn from these chancellors. You in Africa. Thank you very much. So Mr. Ndegwa's illustrious career at Safaricom PLC, a leading communication company in Africa, speaks volumes about his leadership acumen, about his dedication to transformative change, his passion for education evid evident in his role as a board member of Global Compact Network Kenya aligns seamlessly with our university missions. Mr. Ndegwa's commitment to a technology as a tool for addressing societal needs and reducing inequality is truly commendable. His visionary leadership at Safaricom, marked by strategic shift towards a purpose-led technology company, is an inspiration for us all. We are excited about the potential for collaborations and growth under his guidance. The Chancellor is coming when we are really extending our ICT studies. I think we are the first university to have launched BAC Data Analytics, MSC Data Analytics, Big Data. We are the first university now getting into BAC e-commerce. And all these are actually things which are very, very core to both Safaricom and ourselves. So, Ndegwa's commitment to technology as a tool for addressing these needs are going to be very useful. So, in conclusion, let, me, let us embark on this new chapter with a sense of optimism and anticipation. We are grateful for the foundation laid by our outgoing Chancellor, James Mwangi, who not only was a Chancellor, but also a friend to all the stakeholders in the university. I don't know whether you have forgotten Dr. Mwangi. When I came, you called me. You called the then 
county governor, you called uh, Mudaura and you took me to the CS. I uh, think, Madam Amina. And what you told me that time has become the driving force of what we have seen in terms of the transformation in the last five years. We are grateful. So, Peter and Degwa, as you take over, we welcome you with our two hands. So, Vice Chancellor will always be there to support you and to make sure that you also enjoy your time here. Thank you very much for accepting. And let us collectively strive for excellence, innovations, and the continued success of Mary University and technology, which dreams of changing, transforming, and impacting communities. May God bless you all, and thank you very much. <clears throat> Mr. Chancellor, sir, allow me to invite the Chair of Council to make a remarks. Thank you, Chair. Uh, the Principal Secretary, the State Department of University Education, Dr. Beatrice Inyangara, our new Chancellor, Dr. Peter Ndegwa and the outgoing Chancellor, Dr. James Mwangi. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, allow me to adopt the already established protocol. And on behalf of the University Council, distinguished visitors, faculty members, staff, and students, it is my honor and joy to give a warm greeting to you, all of you who have assembled here today to celebrate the installation of our new university, Chancellor Dr. Kitandegwa. Congratulations, Mr. Chancellor. Allow me then, before I proceed, ladies and gentlemen, to introduce the members of the University Council. And probably they can come in front just so that you begin to interact with them. I am the Chair of Council, Dr. Jane Kiringai. I will welcome Mr. Martin Kinoti, Janet Ominde Atika, you can wave as I introduce you, Lucy Limanto Mononket. We have in, in absentia the representative of the Principal Secretary of State Department of University Education, Mr. Dabuki, who is not here today. We also have Engineer Sylvester Kinyol, a member of Council. We have the representative from the Principal Secretary Na National Treasury, Mr. Joseph Kamau Maura. Mr. Shatnarasa, this is the University Council that you will be... Oh, sorry, I forgot one. Allow apologies. I thought I'd already introduced our eminent Dr. Kwamba, also a member of council, critical pillar of the council. <laughs> <laughs> and who <laughs> Professor Diambo, who requires more introduction, and it's really. So, Mr. Chancellor, sir, this is the university council, and maybe you can take a photo with them that you will be serving with for the next couple of years. Ladies and gentlemen, in the coming month, the month of March, Mary University will mark its 11th anniversary since receiving its charter. The university, you'll agree, is relatively young and in need of support to realize its master plan. However, as we stand here to witness your installation, as the second chancellor of this university, we are reminded of the rich heritage that appins 
this prestigious institution. In this regard, I would want to express a special tribute to the founding chancellor, Dr. James Mwangi, and the entire university leadership at the rehab that presided over the outstanding success that has seen the student population increase up to 11,600 students today. The also seen investments in the development of strategic resources within the university, such as the Research and Innovation Center, which nurtures young researchers and innovators to turn their ideas into viable ventures. Mary University is currently a business incubation facility as a result of this initiative, allowing both students and out-of-school youngsters with innovative ideas to develop into viable, with ideas to develop them into viable ventures. The founding chancellor also promised to plant trees and Meru University now has a cover that exceeds the national average. Ladies and gentlemen, today marks a significant milestone in the history of our university as we had over the, the chancellorship to a visionary and a respected reader who exemplifies the ideals and culture that define what Meru University is a world-class university of excellence in science and technology. And as I've been speaking with the, with the incoming, with the new chancellor, he has challenged that this is the time to, trans, to translate theory into action. This is the time that your innovations will turn, up in, turn into valuable ideas. You heard the chancellor in, introduce himself as the cobbler for his shoes. Ladies and gentlemen, this speaks to authentic readership. And I agree, and I want to propose that, Lily, that this is the time that will start polishing the jewel that Melu University is. We do appreciate the new authentic uh, readership. Ladies and gentlemen, it is important to note here that the process leading to the appointment of our new chancellor was consultative and rigorous, and was guided by the principles of merit, integrity, and dedication to research and academic excellence. As a result, we are convinced that our new chancellor embodies the commitment of Melu University to quality education, scientific research, technology, and innovation. And ladies and gentlemen, today you have witnessed the signing of five MOUs <laughs> between Meru University, Open University, Equity Bank, Equity Foundation, and Equity Avia. I hope the Chancellor is keeping track of these MOUs, because we need to start implementing them immediately. As a result, I dare say, Mr. Chancellor Sir, that your appointment is more than ceremonial. It carries a weight of responsibility to defend our traditions, advance formation and chart a course of future excellence and innovation. As a science and technology university, we strive to, co to contribute to industrialization of Kenya. This is a vision that we hope will be realized during your tenure. Furthermore, Mr. Chancellor, we invite your readership to co help consolidate and elevate what your predecessor has left behind. And on behalf of the council, we pledge our full support. Your excellent, your, Mr. Chancellor, today, I want to also emphasize that one of the critical pillars of the bottom-up economic transformation agenda is creating a digital superhighway. I think the second MOU here that, create, that has committed that space next to Innovation Center is going to be the hub of the digital superhighway, not just for Kenya, but south of Sahara. It is our commitment and our prayer that this happens during your tenure. Mr. Chancellor, as you commence your term in office, we are filled with excitement and expectation 
knowing that Melo University will continue to thrive under your leadership. It is a journey of discovery and transformation driven by a common vision of excellence and innovation. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to take this opportunity to convey my happy gratitude and that of the council to the government, the, state, the Ministry of Education, particularly the cabinet secretary and represented here by Dr. Beatrice Inyangara, they've been extremely supportive. And when we called on them, they were always there to support this university. Your ongoing support, which has contributed to the achievement both inside and outside this acad academic community. Allow me to, to thank the University Management Board, as well as the teaching and non-teaching staff who keep this outstanding institution functioning smoothly. I also want to express my heartfelt gratitude to the student readership and all students here today for working with the university readership to achieve its objectives. And I think this is really special. We really, really accept, uh, please accept our gratitude as a council, because since we came into office, this university has experienced a certain kind of peace and stability that we really do appreciate and don't take it for granted. And it is our hope and prayer that this is a new dawn, that this is going to be a university that reads from the front in terms of student readership, excellence in academics and innovation. I also want to express and our call for us to unite in celebrating this historic event and renewing our university mandate of education, research, and service to the community. Thank you very much. May God bless you, and may God bless Mary University of Science and Technology. And now, it is my humble duty to invite the PS State Department of University of Education Dr. Beatriz Inyangara to introduce, to address the public. Our Chancellor, Mr. Peter Ndegwa, our founding Chancellor, Dr. James Mwangi, Chancellors of other universities present, Chairpersons of the University Council, along with the council members, council members um, of Mary University of Science and Technology, that is, our Vice Chancellor, Professor Romanas Oziambo, Vice Chancellors and Principals of other universities, all invited guests, university management, staff, and students of Mary University. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Good afternoon again. Today is a momentous occasion as we gather to celebrate the installation of the second chancellor of Mary University of Science and Technology, Mr. Peter Degua. At the same time, we are here to bid a fond farewell to the outgoing chancellor, Dr. James Mwangi, whose tireless dedication and visionary leadership have left an indelible mark on the legacy of this institution. Dr. Mwangi has shown unwavering commitment to this university through his exceptional service during his tenure. In the past 10 years, Mary University has witnessed unprecedented growth, academic excellence, and a steadfast commitment to fostering an environment of innovation and inclusivity. Under his guidance, the university has become a beacon of academic distinction in the country. Its impact in the community and in the nation is remarkable. And really, I just want us to reflect on what it takes to turn a polytechnic into a university. It is a daunting task. And when we called upon Dr. Mwangi to lead us on this onerous 
journey. He came with open arms and a loving heart. He gave us his all. And so today, we really want to demonstrate servant leadership. He came down from his our office to us, to our level, understood our needs, and served with distinction. Dr. Mwangi has championed initiatives that bridge the gap between academia and the real world, ensuring that Mary University remains relevant in a rapidly evolving global landscape. The emphasis on research, community engagement, and global partnerships has elevated this university's standing as a center of innovation and intellectual growth. So, as we express our gratitude for the selfless service of Dr. Mwangi, I want uh, all of you to join me in giving a resounding applause to this great man. We also extend a warm welcome to the new steward of this institution, Chancellor Peter Degua. Can I hear some noise? <laughs> Today marks the beginning of a new chapter, one that holds the promise of continued progress, innovation, and academic excellence. Mr. Ndegwa brings with him a wealth of experience, a vision for the future, and a passion for education that will undoubtedly guide this university to new heights. The hopes and dreams of many generations of students to come are now in your hands. And not only the students, Mr. Chancellor Sir, all these men and women seated behind you and this one seated in front of you and indeed the whole community lay their hopes and their aspirations in you and i know and i am sure that you have what it takes not only to fulfill their aspirations but to drive the leadership of this university in such a manner that it's going to impact our lives in the most transformative ways. The role of a chancellor is not merely administrative. It is a position of influence, inspiration, and responsibility. One that will require you to inspire this community gathered here today to achieve what appears unattainable for them to scale to heights they never thought possible. We trust that your leadership will build upon the strong foundation laid by your predecessor, for we have seen what you have done in other places. Very remarkable work indeed. Your ability to navigate the complexities of global institutions makes us confident that this institution is in capable hands. In an era where education is not confined by geographic borders, Mr. Ndegwa has the unique opportunity to lead this university into a future that embraces diversity, technological advancements, and the changing needs of our students, our first clients. The challenges we face are numerous from the ongoing impact of the global pandemic to the imperative of addressing climate change and social justice issues. Your leadership, Mr. Chancellor, will play a pivotal role in steering this institution through these challenges and fostering an environment where our students are not
that we will collectively shape the destiny of this great institution. And I would challenge to complete some projects. From where I sit, I can assure you that good things are on their way. So what's the space? As we welcome a new era, let us not forget the profound impact of Dr. Mwangi. His legacy is woven into the very fabric of Nairi University. To Dr. Mwangi, your contributions have been immeasurable and your leadership will be remembered with deep appreciation and respect. May your future endeavors be as rewarding and fulfilling as your time has been at Nairi University. And as I conclude, I want to tell you, the Nairi University community, you are lucky. You are lucky to have this great man, decorated, philanthropic, passionate about education as your chancellor. Clap for yourself. <laughs> Let this day be a celebration of continuity, change, and the enduring pursuit of knowledge and excellence. May Mary University continue to thrive under the leadership of our Chancellor, Mr. Degwa. I thank you all and God bless you. Mr. Chancellor, sir, it is with great humility that I invite you to address the congregation. Thank you, sir. Principal Secretary, uh, State Department uh, for the for University Education and Research, uh, Beatrice uh, Muganda, uh, Chairperson of the University Council, uh, Dr. Jane Keringai. I'm so used to calling her Jane. I have to learn the manners of universities, and I'll now start calling you Doctor. Uh, Vice Chancellor, uh, Professor uh, Romana Sotieno, Council Members. University management, faculty and members of staff, uh, students, distinguished guests. Before I say all protocols observed, in case you think I've forgotten the, my friend, former chancellor, uh, Dr. Uh, Mwangi, uh, I want to recognize and acknowledge you and I'm sure I'll say a few more things uh, about you. Uh, so good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, students. Even, even those who came at 10. You know, it reminds me of when we, knew, we used to be in university. I was saying to jo Dr. Mwangi, even us in university, we never used to wake up before 9. Uh, but anyway, that's for, that's for another day. Um, so before, before, I start, before I start, I wanted to say just a few, a few things, and, I, and then I'll get to the formalities. Uh, I was saying to uh, the university council uh, chair, that uh, if it was in private sector, we would have finished this in half of the time. But uh, <clears throat> I think it is very important to understand and acknowledge and uh, respect the traditions uh, of the institutions that we lead. And that's the way we are able to, to lead those institutions in the right way, and we can transition in many ways. But anyway, before I, uh, before I start, I wanted to say a couple of things. One is, uh, to my friend uh, Dr. Mwangi, uh, who is also my neighbor, uh, he can throw a stone to my house. Uh, I wanted to tell him that there is also something called iPads. He can actually buy one, rather than ha <laughs> rather than have uh, papers uh, when he's making a speech. And uh, <laughs> and and he 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 says to me, and cutting the same tree he has been planting. The second thing I wanted to say to uh, my friend Dr. Mwangi is that, uh, you know, he says now all the MOUs we have signed. Did you, rea did you realize the MOUs were one way? This is what you will do 
and it is an MOU. I thought it's memorandum of understanding, but uh, uh, it, is in, it is in great spirit and it's in service of uh, what we do. Um, the second thing I wanted to say is that I've been, it's a long time, so as I was preparing for this, it has been a long time since I, I was at a university. I remember my graduation uh, and I remember when I, when I attended London Business School for my MBA, which was a long time ago, probably many years before some of the students, many of the students in this room were born. So I kind of was wondering uh, how do I ensure that I, and I, I then reintegrate myself into the tradition. But I wanted to say there's someone who has helped me understand that. So my wife uh, recently, last year, graduated with a doctorate uh, with <coughs> Jemima Waitito with a doctorate in uh, uh, in uh, a DBA, a Doctor of uh, Business Administration from Liverpool uh, University. So I attended her graduation. That was both for self-preservation, but also to see what, she, what that she had actually she had actually uh, done what she said uh, at home she was doing, which is uh, study. <coughs> and then and then we had this debate. So I told her, look. Now we are going to be invited in these functions, Mr. and Dr. Waititu. <laughs> and then I was announced as uh, incoming chancellor for Mero University. And she was very disappointed. Now she says, you're going to get a doctorate. Have you struggled for it? <laughs> I've told, I told her that I've worked a long time in, in my career to, to deserve to be a chancellor. But anyway, that was with good, good humor. So today, this morning, she was telling me, we are going to now be invited as doctor and doctor, uh, so which is which is nice. Um, the third thing is that uh, I wanted to to say institutions are made by people. So when I was uh, being considered for this role, I talked to a few people. Of course, I talked to Dr. Mwangi. I asked him, "Is Meru University a good place?" <laughs> he told me, "No, don't worry. You'll enjoy yourself there, and you'll actually." make a big difference, uh, so, so you, should, uh, you should feel uh, good. I met the Vice-Chancellor, uh, who, who is a great man. You have a brilliant Vice-Chancellor. Uh, you should treasure uh, the Vice-Chancellor you have. And then, of course, I, I met um, the Council Chair, Jane, uh, who, who I, oh, Doctor, uh, Doctor Kiringai, uh, if I may behave. Um, and. Uh, <laughs> And the reason I'm saying this is that the warmth that I felt and the attention to the role and the mission that they have was what makes you feel connected and wanting to be involved with something. Yeah? So I felt you have leaders, you have uh, past chancellors, you have university council chair, uh, you have uh, vice chancellor. That actually gave me the confidence that this is a university to be involved in, uh, to actually put in my time as someone has as many people have said it's not a ceremonial role once i personally put uh, my heart in the ring i always give a hundred percent so thank you for giving me a confidence uh, that i'm joining the right institution and today has reinforced that so i really thank you uh, to to all those that i met of course and then i met the peers uh, and uh, she told me that she has uh, 44 other children, i.e. other universities that she's looking after. But Meru is one of her uh, top ones. I, do, I don't want to say where it fits because she would be conflicted. Uh, but um, I think you have a lot of support from the ministry, both from the CS but also the PS. Uh, and I'm sure uh, together we can really create a future for this university. So thank you and uh, thank you for the warm welcome uh, and kind words that everyone has had. It's truly an honor and a privilege to stand here before you as the second chancellor uh, of Meru University uh, of, of Science and Technology. I'm deeply humbled uh, by the responsibility entrusted to me and excited about the journey that lies ahead. Uh, first and foremost, I want to express my heartfelt appreciation uh, to Dr. James Mwangi, our esteemed outgoing Chancellor. Please clap for James. <clears throat> In my organization, when people clap, I say, that's not enough. Please clap better. 
uh, otherwise I had uh, being asked for swimming pool and all this stuff it might not come if you don't clap <laughs> so Dr. Mwangi your legacy at must uh, is extraordinary and I'm using the word is because it will continue to be uh, I'm sure you will be as you have said uh, be a cheerleader from, uh, from, from our side uh, you will provide advice uh, where we find challenges uh, and I'm sure we will partner together uh, in the future of this great uh, institution. Your visionary leadership, dedication to education and commitment to sustainable practices have set a standard that inspires, all, uh, inspires us all. I'm delighted to inherit the role from someone who has dedicated himself to the advancement of knowledge, to the empowerment of individuals and to the betterment of society through initiatives such as Wings to Fly program. As I take over this mantle, I commit equally de dedicate myself to, to take this great institution to the next level and build, and build on the foundation that you have laid. There is always errors every time you take over in a row. You always have to think about what error are you managing in and what is the responsibility and the mission to go after. But you always have to build on what has been there in the past. Because if you don't, if you don't do, then you can't build a future without acknowledging uh, and ensuring that uh, we build uh, on, on what has been created. I'd also like to extend my gratitude to the government uh, through the PS represented, uh, representing the ministry here, the university uh, leadership uh, and the entire Meru community for welcoming me with open arms. I have uh, been around the country, given the kind of roles that I've played. I know Meru, but I'm sure I'll discover a lot more about Meru now that I am Chancellor of this university. Uh, and I was saying to the, to the council chair that uh, I will come for a proper induction uh, where I can walk around and see whether if I can look after James's forest. Is it called Dr. James's, uh, Dr. James Mwangi's forest? And I told him probably he should leave the ego that he received to <laughs> overlook that forest. <laughs> so I look, I look forward to making a uh, worthy contribution towards the growth and success uh, of this institution. To our students, you are the heart of this university. Your dreams, aspirations, and contributions drive our mission. And this is even to those who came at 10. Yeah? I know, I know the Vice Chancellor men mentioned that in, in, in great humor, but actually, you know, we recruit lots of graduates uh, as corporates, James, myself, and, and everyone else. Uh, and discipline is a very important part of success and transitioning into the corporate world. Uh, I think it is very important uh, that, although we say these things in humor, uh, that you understand that the, 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 the private sector or, or the, the, the outside world, once you live, educational institutions uh, about how disciplined in, uh, you are and how passionate you are and how much you want. The thing that will distinguish someone 20 years after graduation is not what they studied, is not the, uh, what they scored, whether it was a first or a second or whatever. It is how passionate, how resilient and how determined you are to go after what you want. And you can check it. It is all about grit and resilience that makes uh, us all. So enjoy yourself when you are in the university, but remember <laughs> that uh, you also need to build a character that helps you actually navigate the external world. Uh, to the dedicated uh, staff members and faculty, uh, it is your daily dedication that has propelled this university to what it has become in such a short period of time. We will prioritize your well-being of both we will prioritize the well-being of both the students' community as well as that of faculty and non-teaching staff. It's my belief that university uh, should provide not just a dedu an education, but an experience that nurtures personal and intellectual growth. So ladies and gentlemen, as I take on this role, I'm keenly aware of the transformative power uh, of education and the role it plays in shaping the future of our society. My passion for education is not merely a professional commitment, but a personal conviction. I benefited a lot uh, from education 
I came from very ordinary backgrounds like many of you, uh, and I know how, how important education is. Education has had a, a huge influence on my life, shaping my journey right from Gaidesia Primary School, which I visited last year, about a year ago, uh, to see how it was and to support them. In Yandarwa County, where my journey began, to Sare Boys Centre, to University of Nairobi, to London Business School and onward. As I reflect on the history of academic excellence, innovation, and a commitment to societal uh, impact of this university, I'm reminded of the profound impact that education can have on individuals and society at large. Universities are not just places of learning. They are also beacons, beacons of knowledge that breaks barriers, unlock potential, and create pathways uh, to a brighter future. Since award of the charter, MAST, that is University, uh, Meru University of Science and Technology, has maintained a steadfast commitment to academic in integrity and innovation. It is my sincere intention to build upon this strong foundation and lead our university to new horizons. My commitment to academic rigor will be unwavering, ensuring that our students receive world-class education to prepare them for the challenges of the 21st century. And I'm sure I'll have ways of testing that because I'll be getting students as inter interns, I'll be getting students uh, to join Safaricom as part of our graduate program. <coughs> so you better showcase your skills when you come to our organizations because you don't want to let the chancellor down. Yes? You don't want to let the chancellor down. Actually, you don't want to let yourself down. Uh, I bring with me a dedication to driving positive change drawn from my experiences at PricewaterhouseCoopers, at Diageo, whether that is here in Ghana, in Nigeria, in Europe, and Safaricom across many countries. My focus on an inclusive culture, talent development, and sustainable practices also aligns with the values of Meru University. As we embark on this journey together, I'm dedicated to fostering an environment collaboration and you know, innovation and growth building on the foundations that Dr. Mwangi has left. I'll champion partnerships that are driven by our fundamental purpose to transform lives, as you know about Safaricom, and to create positive impact within our communities. No one can do anything alone. It requires partnership. I'm particularly excited about partnering Safaricom with Meru University. Uh, so it is not just what James said about the MOU. Actually, I'm committing to the MOU that uh, we agreed with James in areas that align with our vision to evolve into a technology company. James and I were talking about, for example, data science. Uh, in Safaricom, we, three years ago, we didn't have uh, a very big team. It was probably one or two people. Today, we have 40 data science and data engineers. And we have probably the biggest amount of data that any organization can have. Uh, whether that because you have uh, you have data on, uh, on, uh, on 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 what people do in the internet, you have data on financial services, all anonymized. You can use that data uh, to to build a data science uh, ecosystem that actually allows us to develop products uh, that uh, solve societal challenges. So, for example, um, today we use big data. We do, we use big data and analytics to understand who might want to commit a fraud on one of our customers. We can pinpoint what is happening, which area, you know, we can tell, um, we can tell and actually pre-warn customers well before some of the issues that they face. Uh, so so that's, that's just an, that's an example of a use case that we are, uh, we are applying data science to. Uh, we, can, uh, we can use data science, and uh, especially as in the, in the current age of uh, AI and Gen AI, uh, to do a lot more for customers and for society. Our journey to becoming a technology company is deeply rooted in our belief in the power of innovation and digital solutions that can solve societal challenges. We have witnessed the profound impact of technology on societies and individuals, and we are committed to leading the way in this regard. As a company, we are investing heavily in new technologies, uh, in research uh, and development to stay ahead at the forefront of the digital revolution. I want to urge all students, and I'm sure we'll talk uh, at, at an appropriate time, regardless of your course of study, 
you cannot ignore technology. It will have an impact on anything you study, whether you are studying languages, you are studying humanities, you are studying medicine. All those areas are being influenced in a, tr in a, in a very profound way by technology. So you have to be aware of how technology is going to influence um, the kind of uh, course or, or, or area of study that you are, you are undertaking. What is even more motivating for me is a shared ambition for both Safaricom and Me Meru University for Science and Technology. Just like Safaricom, Meru University is, an interna is, is intentional in being the technology organization of choice, focused on being the power, a powerhouse in science and technology. I sent my team, my digital engineering, a, a digital information team, uh, which is the kind of old IT, but we call it uh, uh, digital, uh, digital IT today, uh, to, to, to see what the university is doing. So they met the vice chancellor, they met a few of the students, probably some of you attended some of those sessions. And what we, have, what we are doing with, many, with most of the universities is to ask them to choose one area in, our tech, in, in, the, in the new technology areas, whether that is AI, uh, whether that is uh, cyber security or whatever area, and choose so that we have a, a center of excellence. So if you want cyber security, we can go to a particular university and so on. So when they told uh, the, the, the vice chancellor that's, that's the case, he said he'll choose all the five areas that they presented. Uh, and because he said most of the people who came were students in, in many of the universities that uh, we've recruited from. Uh, so it's interesting to see that you have the appetite uh, to, to actually go beyond uh, and make sure that you are leading university uh, in the digital area. Even beyond our in-house capability, we work together to explore new opportunities for funding and development. You know that university funding is, is continuing to be a challenge. So as you, invest, as you think about the future, and this is probably more to the council, uh, to the university, uh, um, uh, both teaching and, and mean staff, thinking about how we can build an institution that is sustainable into, into the future. Uh, that's what many universities do, do around the world. And it is connecting with the community, whether that is private sector, government, and beyond, uh, to make sure uh, that um, you set the future, um, you set the right future we want. And then the second thing, using the access that we have, you have a lot of land, uh, you can uh, use that asset to, to really propel uh, the, the future of this university. So together we can leverage our extensive network to bring, new, to bring in new partners who share a vision for a better, more digitally empowered future. Above all, Safaricom, at Safaricom, we are committed to being actively involved in the academic calendar of this institution. So for example, we are doing Quite, uh, we are doing a lot of work and one of the things we always require is interns and the, one of my team said uh, and actually he is from here he was supposed to be here with me he said I'll commit to give 10 internships to the, to the students and Meru as a gift for coming from the place so you are, that is that, that is, um, that, that, is, that, is that, that shows the engagement with institutions like Safaricom or Equity can have profound benefits uh, in the way that we partner together to create uh, a mutual benefit. I am aware of the enormous growth that MAST has had in the past five years. Growing student numbers from 4,000 to 12,000, adding numerous courses and growing the staff and faculty uh, to provide the needed support to the students. We are particularly keen to avail opportunities for students by development of digital skills and, and I can commit this uh, very proactively or through various programs that we have at Safaricom and you'll hear more details as we go ahead. With the focus of the university being on producing students in the science and tech field, organizations such as Safaricom and other tech organizations, we, we just, to, to just so that the students are aware, we have a, a relationship with 14 institutions that we've come together uh, to, and to help students from across our university uh, all our university institutions to understand uh, the future from a tech perspective. Um, we, we, we hold an annual event called Decode, which is to, to help, especially those who have uh, uh, technology backgrounds, to understand what is happening in the real world 
and, and so that they are prepared uh, when they leave uh, uh, academic institutions. Additionally, some of the Safaricom digital IT teams have already visited, as I said earlier, and are looking forward to inspiring and guiding the next generation of innovators uh, through a program such as Women in Technology. We really uh, direct a lot of our efforts to make sure diversity and inclusion uh, is, uh, um, uh, is, 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 uh, is driven in our organization, whether that is within our organization on the, on, on the way we recruit, the way we train, the way we recruit vendors, uh, so we, we promote uh, women, women-run businesses. But in particular, we have internally uh, a team we call Women in Technology that uh, have outreach programs, both with schools but also universities, to encourage women uh, to, to take on uh, technology uh, and science-related um, uh, disciplines. Um, so these programs such as Women in Technology, but also Safaricom Engineering Community, will be able to help uh, us partner better in order uh, to make um, uh, Mary University uh, a, a critical hub uh, for uh, science and technology. So beyond academic excellence, Safaricom places a strong emphasis on environmental sustainability. We recognize the importance of addressing climate change by, looking, uh, by taking meaningful actions that pave way for greener, more sustainable future. One such initiative is a tree growing exercise. I appreciate the effort and commitment to the environment conservation that you have already exercised, uh, Dr. Uh, Mwangi. Uh, and um, we will retain uh, the name Dr. Uh, Dr. James Mwangi Forest. And I was saying to, to Mwangi that I will look after the forest. <laughs> and uh, and, and uh, so I'll look after your forest, uh, Dr. Mwangi, but also take it. Uh, from an environment perspective, take it to the next level in terms of how we can conserve uh, and actually take uh, this agenda even forward. Beyond tree growing through Safaricom Foundation, we'll also explore other opportunities for community extension. For areas we can find to ensure the university is self sustaining. Most importantly, I look forward. Uh, to mass investing to produce more researchers, creating a culture of innovation that will benefit uh, Meru University family uh, as well as the Meru community. It's very important that we are linked and connected to the community. We hear many uh, uh, cities in the world that are called university cities or university towns. Meru can be one of them. Meru being a regional based with a uh, region blessed with agricultural richness. We are also looking to work together to implement a sustainable practice in farming. Through Digifarm, which is one of our company's uh, uh, program in agribusiness, we leverage technology to enhance farming practices, produce farmers with access to crucial information markets and financial services. This program has the potential to revolutionize uh, agriculture in this community and create sustainable livelihoods for the society. So as I conclude, I invite all of you to join me in, exciting, in this exciting chapter of our university history. I pay tribute to my predecessor, uh, Dr. Mwangi. Mary University has a bright future, and I trust the service I am now expected to provide as Chancellor and honored to give uh, with what is, it will be worthy of, the great, of this great university. Uh, in conclusion, I challenge all of us as a family of Mary University of Science and Technology to contribute towards building an institution that will propel Meru uh, as a great university town. I look forward to Meru being mentioned amongst many others uh, in the world that have grown to be the growth uh, and development uh, hub uh, for those, for those uh, areas. I look forward to a future field with shared achievements and success. Once again, I thank you uh, for the warm, warm welcome as a Chancellor, and I see that it, it might just about rain, uh, so if it rains, it is uh, because we are blessed. Uh, if it doesn't rain, it will rain another time. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I, I really am truly honored uh, to be standing here uh, and to accept being uh, the second Chancellor of this great institution. Looking forward to partnering together uh, and looking forward to knowing about this great uh, uh, great institutions, but also the area. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Wow, what a blessing to Meru University of Science and Technology. would like to invite Reverend Dr. Jennifer Yutihet to take us through the closing prayer. Uh, student, please be upstanding for closing prayer. Let us pray. Gracious Master, Creator of heaven and earth, we are grateful this afternoon. We honor you. We glorify your holy name. Our Father, we thank you for the opportunity to witness the installation and um, Lord, also to witness the transition of power between our outgoing Chancellor and the incoming Chancellor. Lord in heaven, we want to thank you for our outgoing Chancellor. The Lord, he has worked for this university for 10 years. His commitment, his devotion, his sacrifice cannot go unnoticed before you, O oh Lord. But Father, we pray for him. We pray that you guide him even for the new assignment that has been bestowed upon him. Lord, may you be with him. But Father, I want to thank you for our new Chancellor. I want to pray, everlasting God, that your wisdom, that your knowledge, your understanding that comes from thee, will guide him, will enable him, our Father, to influence this university to a higher height for the honor and the glory of your holy name. Our Father, we thank you and we worship you as all of us we team together towards the vision of this university. I will pray, O oh Lord, that you will enable us to continue working as a team so that we're going to produce giants, giants that will influence, that will direct, that will guide, will honda this world in the right direction. All of us, our Father, may you be with us, guide us, we thank you for our VC. We pray for him. Our Father, as he continues on leading this university, we pray for your guidance. We pray the Lord will be with him all the time. We pray for all leaders in various levels of leadership in this university. Lord, may you be with them. And I them, O oh Lord, to come up with great ideas, ideas that will make this university to be the world-class university. A lot of many people will be attracted to come and be part and parcel of this university. As Lord, we end our occasion, we want to appreciate you, we want to honor you, we want to glorify your holy name. For this is our prayer of faith in Jesus' name. Amen. So many days, Mr. Chancellor, sir, and uh, if I didn't call your name, please feel valued. It's not that I don't have the time, but we really recognize your presence. Mr. Chancellor, sir, in accordance with the University Charter Part 2, Section 2, and the Statute 5, Section 38, and the second schedule of the Act on Appointment of a University Chancellor, I declare this assembly officially dissolved. We have a new, some announcements. Lunch for our invited guests is served at the cafeteria and we request our ushers to guide them there. And students' refreshments are served at the hospitality center. I'm sure you have been issued with meal cards, so we will proceed there after this. So after the national anthem, the procession will leave the dais and I am requesting that we all remain standing until the procession leaves the graduation square.
invitation to attend this inaugural ceremony for our Chancellor, Mr. Peter Begua. We don't take it for granted that you have stayed with us. We'd also like to appreciate all those who are involved in organizing this ceremony from the tents, from the security.